today's guests have been a part of so much of pop culture that they're pretty much recognizable wherever they go. So this husband and wife are an action-powered power couple and kick the asses of everyone in Hollywood. So please welcome to the studio, Ellen Holman and Stephen Dunleavy. Woo! Hi guys, how are you? So happy to oh be here. Oh my gosh, guys. this is so amazing to have you guys in house like right now. It's so cool. Thank you for inviting us. Of course, of course. So um, let's start with Steve really quick. So for those of you thinking to yourself like that guy like looks kind of familiar, you know, uh, it's because he's basically been in like every movie ever. If you just if you just want to go with that, yeah, we're talking. Well, John, uh, Jumanji, John Wick Two, Logan, Mad Max: Fury Road. <laughs> Rampage, Deadpool 2, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Spartacus, Suicide Squad, X-Men Origins. Do you want me to keep going? Because I think it's easier to say the things that he hasn't. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, that, that Funnily enough, probably yeah. enough, no Avengers films. That, well, um, I was always going yet, something else. Yeah. Yet. 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 Yeah. There you go. Um, but both in front of the screen as an actor and as a stuntman and behind the scenes as a stunt coordinator and doing mocap, you've been in all of our favorite movies. Yeah, it's very cool. And then Ellen has basically beat the snot out of everyone in Hollywood. <laughs> in including, so, including him. Including him. That's how we met. <laughs> That's actually how we met. That is? <laughs> by you we beating met, him We up? met on the set of Spartacus, um, yeah. And like, she just kicked your ass. I was part of the stunt team. She, well, we were training her to fight. I was, I was playing Saxa, the German gladiatress, mm -hmm. as, as you do. It's yeah. just a Tuesday in our household. Right. And uh, I saw his character, the Egyptian, playing with these reverse grip double daggers. And I thought to myself, I want. <laughs> <laughs> I want those. He wasn't half bad either. Yeah. So he, he would train me in the reverse grip double daggers. So you can imagine when I went to the, the show creator, Stephen DeKnight, and said, Hey, so what do you feel about these these reverse grip double daggers that are literally the size of my forearm? He goes, let's do it. That's amazing. So he allowed me to have that as our weapon, and that's actually how we met. That's so cool. So romantic. So again, oh, Ellen, yep, there, there we go. go. There Ellen we is go. probably best known for her portrayal of the warrior woman Saxa in the show Spartacus, who manages some John Wick level body counts with her trusty <laughs> twin daggers. I think she, it was like 36 that episode. It was about 36 that episode. Uh, she returned as another damsel who causes distress in the Scorpion King 4 <laughs> as Melina. I know, that was actually, I love that. Um, I'm a damsel. Who causes distress. It's yes, so cool. Yes. Mm -hmm. And her cage fight in that movie is epic. So even it like fast. it's so oh, cool. So fun. And I think it's, it's so safe fun. to say that we have two of the most dangerous and badass guests that we've ever had on Sideshow Live. <laughs> so if the apocalypse right here. happened right now, you guys would be so covered. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. So That's good covered. to know. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you. So a question for both of you. Mm -hmm. What got you started down the path that would eventually lead to acting and then stunts or which came first? The stunts or the yeah, acting? First. Oh my gosh, honey. <laughs> I've been in the industry about 17 years or so, and whatever you break out in, that tends to be the genre that you, you stick in. Mm -hmm. So uh, for me, I think my, my first film 17 years ago was uh, Roadhouse 2. <laughs> I was Roadhouse! Like, I, was like, yes! I was, oh yeah, I was a like, kindergarten teacher slash military chick, because those two things go together. Right! right? With yeah. an awesome tramp stamp. The tramp stamp! The tramp stamp! Tattoo. I'm like, sure, guys, sure, guys. Yeah, 90s. We'll, we'll yeah. make this happen here. Um, <laughs> so I kind of had my got my taste for blood in that one. Mm. And uh, my God, 17 years later, doing the same thing. I was fortunate enough to to play Saxon Spartacus as well as Zephyr in uh, uh, mixed martial arts series Into the Badlands, which is on AMC. Mm -hmm. I was an albino. It was it was so badass. Had a long sword. It was it was pretty pretty fantastic. That's and, amazing. Um, and going forward, I have a couple exciting ventures coming coming along as well, which Hubby is, is training me. In fact, just this morning, we had a, a 7 a.m. kickboxing session. It was coffee and kickboxing. Half of these bruises, I, I think, are from, from training right now. That's amazing. <laughs> I love that coffee and kickboxing. Coffee. That should be a thing. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We don't sit there with a newspaper like a normal couple. It's yeah. me blocking yeah. punches, basically. Well, awesome. it's usually me blocking your punches. <laughs> That's what it usually is, but uh, I, I absolutely love love doing it. I've, I've been part uh, part of the jujitsu world for quite some time, mm -hmm. and uh, just yeah, adding adding more things to my to my belt. So it's yep. it's been it's been an exciting exciting path. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. and, and you, Steve. 
Um, I was at college. I was studying economics and marketing, uh, but I was doing martial arts, um, Taekwondo at the time, and I love driving cars as any like 19 year old does. And, and I was doing some acting and uh, I got a summer job, like working for Fox Studios, open up like a back lot in Sydney. And they had some stunt guys come out to, to train them, to train, uh, train us in, in mm -hmm. some of the street performance. And I was like, wow, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> like people get paid to do that. And what was your, what was your first job? Hmm? What was your first job? Your official? What oh, character? that was for what well, for you know, oh, for Universal. Yeah, you just after that, I I went to Universal and then ended up playing the Terminator the in T two three D. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> Did you totally see the Terminator? I totally can see you as the Terminator. But yeah. I like that. Like, what was your first? And he's like, oh yeah, the Terminator. <laughs> just, just the it's kind of cool to dress up in those leathers and and have the shotgun and. You know, because like Arnold Schwarzenegger was, I was always obviously a big fan, mm -hmm. like Pumping Iron and Arnold Schwarzenegger and the Terminator series were, I was a huge fan of the early Terminator series, I'll yeah. put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> so do you guys have a, a specific stunt on your resume that you're particularly proud of? You know what, actually one of my favorite stunts I did, I, I shouldn't say favorite because it, it terrified me the most was um, that jump we did, a 150 foot jump off a castle rampart in Romania on a descender crane. <laughs> yeah, sorry, what? <laughs> to like, what? to I rocks like, below. Oh, there, was, to, there was like a rock quarry below. It was absolutely terrifying. And the person that they they uh, initially did the jump with was, was a guy, so he was nowhere near my weight. And he, he also does rigging as mm -hmm. well. Um, he's he's an all-rounder. Yeah. Um, so he he was actually there doubling our lead, Victor Webster. So he was there. Just I saw him watching the wires, and he's just he's got his notepad. They used to call him the professor. Uh -huh. Like he's there with his notepad, just writing down. It was everything. more to do with the fact that I had an eye infection. I had to wear my glasses the entire time. But yeah. <laughs> in the Scorpion King outfit, <laughs> yeah. leather pants and glasses. Yeah, was, <laughs> so I, of course, I have the harness on, and I'm looking down 150 feet to this rocky quarry, and you're just hanging in this thin wire off of what we call a descender crane. And I just kind of looked down at him. I'm like. I'm gonna die doing this, <laughs> and, he's, and he was there luckily to make sure because there was quite a uh, quite a language barrier uh, 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 with the team out there because mm. it was it was a Romanian stunt team. So I'm like, am I going to die when I jump off the castle? And they're like, Bleh. that's how she talks to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, honey, did you make sure I survived this? Yeah, to, to tell the tale. So that that was uh, um, probably the most terrifying and yeah. exciting. Yeah. Sounds like right. it. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having my uh, back, babe. Absolutely. Of course. I've got to bring you home in one piece. Um, <laughs> and, so like, he has like a personal <laughs> stake in this matter. I so. I mean, I feed him three three square meals a day. Yeah. Incentive. Recently, um, probably uh, the one that comes to mind recently is probably like John Wick Two um, in the uh, the mirror room sequence. Oh my god, yeah. that one's brutal. <laughs> so there's the four of us. There we go. There's, yeah. a, there's a pit. There's me like looking at my feet, going, hmm. Um, <laughs> my head's about to cave in. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I get shot off the staircase um, and fall. And the way we wanted to do it, uh, Chad Stahowski, the amazing director of, of the John Wick series on, um, of two and three. Uh, it was all mirrors, so we couldn't put any pads down. So it was a concrete stage, obviously with mirrors over it. So I had to fall onto that, and the way we did that, I had a harness on, and I fell through my wires, but the wires catch me. I free fall until the very last second, and we go into uh, a, what they call a gold tail. So there's a line that catches me at the very last second and decels the fall just enough that I won't get knocked up, hopefully won't get knocked unconscious. But it involved me stalling the fallout to the very last second because I've got wires on my upper body and on my legs. Mm -hmm. So the wires on my upper body go taut first and they snap my feet towards the ground. Wow. Which cause you, if you don't go to the last second, you end up like heel, heel towing in and then you snap your head back and get up. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So that was a fun one. We yeah. had to do it. Andy and I watched that one the other day in the office and I was like, how the heck did he do that? And now I know. Yeah. It's trusting your team as no. well yeah. that they're going to yeah. catch you right before you. Well, especially when the, the, you know, you're know you going and uh, the it's like, okay, everyone's set, everything like that. Just to reiterate, the first person in is the medic. They're going to assess him. <laughs> and then we'll go from there. <laughs> Oh my gosh! And but it was good. I, I stayed. Con I was conscious the whole time. That's, it's a precaution. <laughs> I, like, I stayed conscious the whole time. I These think, are the goals we have at yeah. work. Just stay <laughs> conscious the whole I time. I think I was. 
Like, I'm pretty sure I remained no. conscious. The no, it was, yeah, it was fantastic. We had a, we had an amazing, um, There's amazing. There's a lot of trust team. involved. Too. There is, yeah. Yeah. Funny enough, the stunt coordinator of that, JJ Perry of, of John Wick Two, JJ Perry was the stunt coordinator of Elle's first film, Roadhouse Two. Yeah, that was. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Now, how difficult is it to jump back and forth between the mindset of what it takes to be a stunt performer and then to act the, the part as well? Like, is there a particular uh, like they're, method that they're, you go through? They're both married to each other. Okay. Just like us. Aww. Uh, uh, because as an actress, if you, uh, who does a lot of action, if you don't understand how to move physically and it, it changes from character to character to character, then they're not believable. Right. So, uh, and vice versa, as a stunt person, if you don't at least have some some knowledge of being an actor, then you, you're just gonna cut away every time. Yeah. Yeah. Every time you're you're uh, gonna be featured, which is why he is in such uh, a niche. He's in such a unique position because he. He did have a background as a, as a theater actor for ten years before he was in the stunt we, world. We had to bring that up. <laughs> Shakespeare, actually. Oh wow! So so a lot of times he will get these roles uh, in Jumanji, and and there's there's some exciting jobs coming up as well that he can't talk about, but mm -hmm. um, where he will be featured. Because he can say dialogue, he can well, he can marry those two. That was the, one of the reasons you were featured in Mad Max Fury Road as well. You could make the specific jump they needed to, as well as deliver the dialogue. Tell correct? them about that audition. Tell them about that. Of oh, like uh, the Rock Rider Chief. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, I, I played the Rock Rider Chief, which you can't really tell because he's covered. I'm, I'm standing up on top of the thing. Um, there's me doubling Knox. Um, for one of the sequences, one of three doubles. That was fun because I'm standing on the vehicle, well, strapped to the front of the vehicle as we're barreling through the desert, like spraying water, fake fake fuel into the intake. But on, uh, so on Mad Max, we had a, an amazing um, motorcycle team, but um, they decided at the last minute that this character had dialogue and, and everything like that, and they wanted to cast someone. And obviously we were limited to who we had in Namibia because it's not easy to fly people over. So who oh, was yeah. your audition with, honey? Who do well, you I, I auditioned, <laughs> So like we <laughs> might, have, might, have heard, might have heard of her. Or did auditioned, but I auditioned on I think on a Tuesday, and we didn't hear anything. And three or four of us from the team auditioned, and no one heard anything. No one heard anything. And finally, it got to Saturday. And it's like, hey, is that scene happening? Um, do you know who got the audition? And I I, I called the stunt department coordinator, and they're like, yeah, you did. Didn't nobody casting tell you? Nobody told me. No one. Told no one told me anything. I'm like, <laughs> so like, Sunday. Oh my God. Good to know. Sunday, finally, I get the script. And it's like, oh, okay, I've got two pages of dialogue with Shelley Strong. No big deal. So like oh, Academy yeah. Award winner. Um, yeah. and, then, and then like Monday morning, I'm there like getting, they're changing the costume for me and everything like that because we had a really talented motorcycle guy. Thankfully, that was about the same height um, who, was, who was doing all the, the hardcore uh, motorcycle stuff down hills and mountains and everything like that. Um, and then all of a sudden it's... Uh, it's myself and, and Charlize and, um, you know, just, just doing dialogue. Just having a chat. Yeah. Just having that's a chat. Amazing. It's, it's, pretty, cool. it's pretty, it's pretty incredible. Mm. But that opens incredible. up those types of opportunities because of your background and it being is, able yeah. to duel. And yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. It's, it is amazing to go, like I've, I've visited him pretty much on every set and yeah. even on, on Logan when he was, uh, essentially the second hand man to mm -hmm. Boyd. He's he's there in his full on gear, and he'd be in a scene with him and with Hugh Jackman, and then he hop hop on the line on another unit to help out with the rigging. So he'd be in his full costume, his full costume that you see right you here. You gotta point out, props didn't like me because those hands are like it's a neoprene, very painted. And the first time I did it, I didn't have time to take the hand off, and and rigging lines and 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 prop expensive prop hands don't go well together. <laughs> Yeah, I came out of his paycheck. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, so once you're cast as a, as a stunt performer specifically, or you see that a character that you're going to be playing is going to do a lot of action, how do you begin to prepare? Like, what's your process? And then do you have a particular schedule that you stick to? Well, this is actually uh, occurring right now. I'm in uh, pre-production for uh, a super exciting job with uh, uh, an actress who's actually featured on your walls here. Not in this particular room, but in one of your other, uh, uh, other rooms. Um, which I can't say anything yet. Um, it's it's uh, going to be a mixed martial arts film. Oh, awesome! So for that in particular, uh, to do Muay Thai, kickboxing, etc. Um, so I'm on a six day a week, two and a half, three hour a day, uh, 
regime, so that's why I'm like, I have to get all rah, uh, um, in fighting shape, per se. Yeah. Which is why it's even, and sometimes I break it up, so mm -hmm. it's like you do two hours in the morning and an hour in the afternoon, because you'll basically pass out. <laughs> the day will be so exhausted. Um, but for uh, for Spartacus, it was more of uh, the the hand to hand stuff. Mm, so okay. there were there weren't any kicks, there weren't any punches, because uh, to compete with the gladiators, I needed to be fast. I was smaller and I was faster. Mm. So having oh there we go, mm -hmm. there you go, <laughs> you had to be <laughs> a little bit scrappy, but yeah. uh, quick enough to uh, slice all your counterparts. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, do uh, this. This is actually us just having fun. That that was we weren't even. That was just us. That was just us. You know, keeping keeping everything. Because after you fought out. all day, you know, you just go and make movies. Yeah, and I, I would train with the stunt team um, in between setups just to to be able to to keep up with everybody. Um, you just have to be willing to really to really commit and take care of yourself. It's yeah. uh, proper sleep and nutrition. Um, because even on, on Spartacus, our call times would be 4 a.m. Mm. So you're up at 3 o'clock in the morning, and you didn't get home till 7 o'clock at night. And so in between then, you would have to find times to, to train. So yeah. he can tell you, depending upon what jobs he has to, uh, to do, uh, what you physically have to look like. Because there's a physical uh, athletic aspect, but mm -hmm. there's also, um, like for Mad Max, you had to lose a ton of weight. 40 pounds? Yeah. Wow. He, so they he wanted us, to... um, like, obviously it's a post-apocalyptic, not yeah. everyone's getting food, so uh, I was 230, and I went down to 190. I was 230 but when I started, so, and then, but that's just adjusting your training, so normally I'll do, well, we do a lot of, like, judo and Brazilian uh, jiu-jitsu and, and, and kickboxing and things like that normally, but then supplement that with weights mm. to keep, because being 6'3", I'm... I get cast as the big guy and things like that. So being super skinny or anything like that doesn't really work for me. So I keep the weights up. Um, but then for... Um, well, for Logan, you were ginormous. Well, he was oh. a reaver. He had yeah. to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was ginormous. Yeah. Well, because we there will be months at a time. The longest we spent apart, I think, was four months because he was in Namibia. I was in... New, New Zealand. Zealand. We'll be at other different places in the, mm -hmm. the world. It works sometimes. really well for keeping the marriage together. <laughs> we're just not there. We, we've been together nearly, <laughs> what, seven, eight years. We've probably actually physically seen each other too. Of that. But, but so much time will go by and be like, wow, you're a, you're a ginormous dude. Or like, honey, we have to feed you. Like there's, there, it, all, it all depends what the job is. Then yeah. I have a different look. I'm actually three different people. <laughs> she still hasn't worked She out. still hasn't I'm a triplet. Out. Yeah. <laughs> Well, in regards to, to appearance as well, like he was bald for Mad Max, for, right. uh, for, or, oh my God, what, what do you Well, for Logan, for I had the Logan beard and the, and the ponytail, um, Jumanji beard. I had, I ended up, I didn't have a beard for a long time. Yeah, and then, like, yeah Jumanji, Jumanji, Logan. Um, he he very, so I, when yeah. I went to visit him in, in uh, Kauai, he had a, a, another job. I swear, half, everything The Rock does, you basically work on. But yeah, he would, with the big like burly beard and really, we would go on a hike and people would go out of their way to go to the other side of the trail. Because <laughs> he'd have his big walking stick, yeah. yeah. And he'd just be there in all of his gear and he would just go to the other side. I'm like, babe, how about I walk in front of you so that people see like, Barbie, hiking Barbie. <laughs> not, not be intimidated. Not Sasquatch. <laughs> not Sasquatch. So now that you brought up Jumanji, on your list of talents, now you also have dance fighting as well. Yes. So can you tell us a little bit about what that was like to film yeah. that particular? How did, how did you get that job, honey? That was so. Well, I got the job. How so a friend of mine job? was uh, the assistant. Uh, was the fight? Oh, well, assistant fight coordinator, or fight coordinator on that, and. Uh, Funnily enough, uh, Ellen had posted a photo of us. I think we went video. to tango. A video of us doing tango classes. Salsa. Salsa. <laughs> oh, That's how good yeah. a dancer I am. Like, I don't know. But um, yeah, so, and he, he saw the photo and put me up for it. And I got the audition and, and got it. But that was amazing. We jumped. Um, so I literally got off the plane and <laughs> got driven. We, we arrived in Honolulu and then got driven to the North Shore, which mm -hmm. is about an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. Just got the guy was like, yeah, this is you. And we're looking, there's just jungle. And we've got our bags and everything. And myself and, and Rob Mars, who's the other stunt performer, uh, actor in, in that sequence. We literally trekked through the jungle and found our, and we, we started dance lessons straight away. So we had 
I think we filmed it over about a month, that sequence, because we had rehearsals with, with Karen, who was amazing. Yeah. Um, and, and her stunt double, Janelle. <laughs> um, we, yeah, that, uh, we, we started with the dancing and obviously having to piece that together and then adding the, the fight beats in around, around the dance sequence. So that was... That's... Um, yeah. I think it was hilarious. Oh, it was hard, yeah. yeah. Hard <laughs> not to that. keep a straight face. <laughs> but it, it was just, yeah, it, it was a fantastic scene. <laughs> awesome. Um, so, Ellen, we have to talk Saxa really quick. She was a standout character on Spartacus, for Thank sure. You. She kicked everyone's ass. So, how do you prepare for a role like that from. Uh, from what it takes physically to how the how did the role expand once they saw what you could really do? Well, I, I don't think they really knew what to 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 do with me <laughs> when when I showed up like oh, I've been training for like three months before this job, and then as soon as I showed up, like I want to train with all the stunt guys, I want to be this gladiator. They're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, <laughs> so That's perfect uh, though. Yeah, because I to to play a strong female character uh, in a series with Lucy Lawless, mm -hmm. a.k.a. Xena. Uh, like the OG strong OG. Yeah, it right? Was, it was a dream. And I my, know. My mom had, she named her dog Xena. My mom had a, like a life-size Xena poster. Uh, I'm like, oh, I'm working with Xena! <laughs> but only in Please, this... do you bring your mom to set? Like, and It was all the way in New Zealand, oh, so it was such it was a little, hype. Okay, like, but okay, I remember the first okay. day I met Lucy Lawless, I, I was just like, I was so starstruck. I was like, this I mean, is absolutely, it's, it's a dream. Yeah. And then uh, for me to actually be the, the, the gladiator in that, to be the, the female warrior in that, I'm like, I am not going to screw this up. Yeah. I am going to cross every T and dot every single I and, and not rely on a double to do anything. And in fact, I didn't have a double. They didn't, <laughs> I didn't have a double oh. both seasons. I didn't have a double. Um, That's incredible. Because Mad Max stole my double for Charlize. <laughs> <laughs> Mad Max stole my, my double. The, the one who was supposed to double me ended up getting uh, the doubling role we for We brought Charlize. her out wow. to, yeah. We brought her out to Namibia, so. Yeah, so because Saxa had the reverse grip double daggers, there's more than capable people there uh, physically to do the other things, but the daggers were, were such a unique thing that I've been training for months and months on mm -hmm. that they couldn't find anyone that could actually wow. do it. That was my height, my size, my coloring, everything. That's job security right there. Oh, job too. security, <laughs> yes. No, I basically gave myself yeah. job security. And um, when they when Stephen and I first created sex, I don't, I don't think they really had a game plan what they wanted to, to do with her. So they're like, wait a minute. She likes to drink, she likes women, and she likes to kick ass. She's Gannicus. Yeah. She's the female <laughs> Gannicus. We're like, let's just make the love interest. And I'm like, oh my God, because Gannicus was, he's the rock star of the series. Yeah. Like, he is the absolute rock he's star. The party so boy. the party boy, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was so fun to be that, to be that counterpart. And um, yeah, you just you just want to show up as prepared as possible. Ellen was no like the what. scrappy kitten that rocks up, and everyone's like, "Does anyone own this?" But someone puts out a saucer of milk, and then it just keeps going. <laughs> yes. And eventually, it's just like, like we were we were doing a we were shooting a fight sequence while we were about, we were rehearsing for a fight sequence, and uh, it's in one of the things like Ellen's character. I think it's like an eight or a ten foot jump off like the rock wall. Like right. as they're coming down, you jump down, you jump onto a shield. Ride the guy with the shield down and then Into roll off. Into a four-shoulder yeah, roll, roll, hanging block and six and, feet. Yeah. yeah. So we didn't have a double for yeah, that. that. So it was I like, mean, that's yeah. like I, yeah. we Ellen, can all do that in here, right? It got yeah, to the point the, where they actually let me coordinate my own stuff. Oh wow, like, that's well, that was like we didn't yeah. have a double for her to do that, and Ellen was like, "Well, I need to rehearse this." It was like, "Yeah, yeah, but we need to do like the eighty other fight beats as well." So we'll get to you. So Ellen had time off, and all of a sudden, like we're all on this set. <laughs> And you just see this scrappy little kitten in in that costume, carrying what Dragging we call a the, we are, the what we call a <laughs> and it's it's like two or three guys to carry these mats, but it's just oh this. <laughs> and she's dragging this mat across the stage, and we all just stop and we're like. <laughs> and the coordinator looked. He's like, I. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. <laughs> and I would like double secure my ankles and I put like sandpaper on the bottom of my feet just to, and I test out the shield. They're like, what is she doing? They're like, I don't know. We don't see it because if we don't see it, we're not liable. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so true. It's so true. That's it's so amazing. True. So it's like if there's, if there's something that you really want in life, don't wait for someone else to give it to you. Yeah. Don't you know wait mean? for somebody. No, it's like... <laughs> I'm just saying this to anybody. Yeah. I'm, just saying, I'm just saying this to anybody. Don't There's a live audience right now. Yeah. She's talking to don't, all of them. Don't wait for someone else to give you the opportunity. 
Just step up to the plate and, and make it happen for yourself. Because no one's going to be like, oh, is this your dream? Here you go. Just don't you... use reverse grip daggers in real life. <laughs> yes. Together. There you go. Don't, don't use it. And yeah, don't let but... the stunt coordinator see you because otherwise he's yeah. liable. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Liability. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have a lot of questions from the audience. So after mm. this very short break, is it okay if we, if you guys stick around, we can Absolutely. have them Absolutely. ask you guys. Sure. All right. So you guys will be right back with Stephen Dunlevy and Ellen Hoffman. I'm going to call you the Hoffinator. No, you know what? Just stick, with, just, Hoffinator. just stick with Ellen. Like, oh. like, uh, uh, like, like Madonna. Like, like Madonna. Oh, Madonna. Oh, Madonna. Just Ellen. Ellen. <laughs> I just Ellen. go by Ellen. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna get your name, I swear the to God. Hominator. The Hominator. The Hominator. It is, it is kind of funny because people do think, for some reason, they think Hoffman. I don't know I why. Don't know why. I don't know why either. Anyway, that's not important. We have a short break. We'll be right back. Thank you guys for watching. We are back with Stephen Dunlevy and the Hominator. I got it correct. Yes. Woo! Nice that's all, which is funny that you're the Hominator, but he played the Terminator. So that's all. Oh, it was like meant to be. Everything's we now. Now that we. you're married, it's we. It's either mine or us. Aww. Yeah, I don't have anything anymore. It's Ellen's or it's Alice. Oh yeah, God. yeah. Oh, that, that's how that works. Yeah, All right, good to know. Works. Noted. Um, <laughs> so we ha we do actually have a lot of questions for you guys. Um, so how difficult is it for you to learn fight choreography, and how much time do you spend on it for a scene that maybe lasts a few moments in total? Uh, it depends how tricky the choreography is. Like I've been doing it for 20 years now. Mm -hmm. So generally you can show me something once or twice and I can do it. Mm -hmm. um, again, it depends how many beats we're talking about. Like yeah. we break it up in a beat. So usually one beat is, is about uh, a second. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's like we had uh, Spartacus, you doing sometimes like 200 beat fights. So that'll be over a week. You'll break it down and learn it and things like that. And things can get a little tricky, but if it's just for a couple of seconds on film, um, some days you'll come in and learn it on the day, like especially for for TV here in LA. Mm -hmm. um, unless it's a intricate fight sequence, you're learning it on the day. Oh, and wow. it also depends if there's gags involved. Like if there's a rigging gag involved, mm -hmm. like um, uh, the cage fight I had with Eve Torres Gracie in Scorpion King. There's a few gags, mm -hmm. like uh, uh, where I was on a rig that where she lifts me up like this. Mm -hmm. Eve is really strong, but to lift a human body above your head like that is a lot. Yeah. So I was on a rig. So you do. We did about 25% of the fight, um, and then you get to that point, and obviously yeah. that's a big what we call we sh setup. We yeah. Shot that fight over a couple of days. Didn't we? That was like a, that was about four days or four so. Four days, yeah. That was about four days or so, and then there's then there's blood resets and, and things like that, and sometimes you have to shoot the end of the fight first. Like there's so you have to know what state of mind your character is at the at the end of it. Wow. And also uh, we have what are called previs. So in your previs, you'll like if I punch you in the face you're gonna have a red mark here. Mm. If I punch you in the nose, you'll have some blood. Mm. So if they shoot the end bit first, you have to be like, okay, so, okay, blood here, blood here, blood here, blood here. <laughs> um, on, on Sparty, they had an incredible uh, hair makeup team and they would go to the previs, which are essentially rehearsals, so they would know what it would be. But sometimes, like you, you wipe it off accidentally or, or there's so much going on that s certain things get missed. So. As a performer, it is your responsibility to know where you are physically uh, uh, and emotionally. Mm. Um, just keeping tabs of how distraught yeah. you are, basically. That there's there's a science to it. Cause yeah. What makes fights interesting okay. is the beginning, middle, and end. Did you bring a question about fights to make up. How did you do that? Because they're all intertwined. I mean, yeah, yeah. it's the whole. It's the same. It's, it's the same every thing. layer. It's the same thing. But it, you need all, all of it to make the scene believable. Yeah, right. It's right? a different. It's it's the actor's approach, the stunt guy's approach. Like for me, it's all about the five beats and things like that. And having said that, fights are, for a long time, uh, fights were just it would be you would have a character set up, and all of a sudden they're doing this weird stuff. Um, fights are unspoken dialogue. So a fight should be an extension oh. of the character. Uh, and it should be like, oh, there's ways, there's different, obviously different styles and different ways to fight, but someone who's not skilled all of a sudden being this kick-ass fighter just doesn't work, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's teaching them a style that is sloppy or uh, manipulating different sequences. Like all of a sudden someone doing a really sequence like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu move doesn't mm -hmm. make sense. Mm -hmm. you know? So it's being able to choreograph those skills around what the character is. 
And wow. also, like, it, it also depends on how great your director is as well. Because something for a movie like Avengers, when they had the whole fight in uh, Wakanda, it's at the end, you know, they're all starting to get defeated and they're exhausted. Yeah. It's all of that was God knows how long that took to shoot. But in order to capture the exhaustion and, and, and tell that story that, oh my God, are they gonna lose? Are they gonna win? Mm -hmm. When you punch in for coverage, that coverage may be three days after you've done that fight sequence. Oh, wow. Right? Mm -hmm. So you have to remember as an actor what state of mind I was in, which means perhaps you do 50 push ups on the ground to be exhausted, or you do cartwheels or whatever. So when that close up comes up, your face is reading that. Mm -hmm. And the, the director, the director will have to know what every cog in the wheel, where where they're at yeah. emotionally and physically. Because wow. let's say like I'm supposed to strangle him, and this we're, is what his face We're never going like. to get to the rest of these questions. <laughs> <laughs> just, we, saying, we just spent half an hour never, answering one never, question. We're never going to get to the end of the questions. There's endless questions. Um, well, one of them is actually directly related to what you guys are currently talking about. So when you, uh, when you are both actors who do your own stunts, do you hold back out of caution, or do you go all out regardless of the situation? Uh, Fight-wise? Yeah. Uh, you never really go all out. Uh, well, it's not like a UFC fight. I mean, most fights... <laughs> They don't <laughs> break anybody's bones. That's, on yeah, I mean, bones, is it a stunt? Bones do get broken. Yeah, I mean, not unfortunately, on purpose, not on purpose. No. no, normally, like, if if people are going like full out, uh, there's different versions of full out. Usually, uh, what you want is your intent, and that's where the acting side comes out. Intent is a hundred percent, and you can do a, a fight at fifty percent, but have your intent at a hundred percent. And it will look amazing. Wow. Because okay. it's sharp and it's clean. Not necessarily. Normally we'll go around 75% of what our stunt guys are. You go to 75% of what the lowest person is is capable of. And also oh. they ramp, they can ramp it up yeah. in post. So we can okay. do, like, there's obviously moves and edits and things like that. But um, your intent sells the fight. Mm. So normally it's, right. it's about 75% and that keeps it clean and sharp. I'd rather see a fully extended a nice cross and then a rabbit punch or a, a, a really short sharp you know because it doesn't read as well on camera oh, okay that makes yeah. sense um what is your favorite fighting style brazilian jiu-jitsu hands down <laughs> my favorite i like that he laughed like, like well no because that was that was gonna be ellen loves it ellen, yeah. ellen loves the technicality it's of it. far. We, yeah. we roll all the time uh -huh. we roll yeah. all the time and but he's the the boys say it's like trying to to snag a baby shark, like trying to hold on to a baby shark. <laughs> <laughs> trying to wrangle a cat, right? Yeah. Yeah. She'll claw you back too. Uh, <laughs> I mean, having done all the, I, I love what Chad Stahelski has done with the, the John Wick films mm -hmm. um, in terms of mixing the judo and hapkido and different styles. There's Filipino martial arts in there and, and trapping and blocking. Um, I love everything. Like there's obviously some nice, really elegant kicks from from Taekwondo, but what Taekwondo the sport has become isn't necessarily like fantastic, but those long clean lines of Taekwondo kicks and then the Filipino knife fighting styles, which is we incorporated into the, the character, the Egyptian and, and Saxa. Oh, awesome. In, in Spartacus, things like that. Yeah. Wow. Are there some classic and iconic stunts that you find astounding? Like a stunt that you didn't perform that's from before your time that you s still look at and go like, wow. I'm, I'm still, inspired by oneers mm. because oneers that are from back in the day mm -hmm. uh, because there's there's certain oneers you see which means there's no cuts whatsoever right. which are the most challenging to do uh, like an atomic blonde it's seemingly uh, a oneer but we have there's digicuts so digital those digital cuts can make it look like it's a it's a whole one in one piece sequence when really it has been chopped up because mm -hmm. that means it has to be an absolute perfect symphony. Everyone, it's almost like theater mm. where everyone has to have their cue seamlessly for everything to work. That is one of the. the but I think there's only like in that 15 minute sequence, there's only something like four digi cuts or something like that. I think. But it looks yeah. like it's one big. It does, thing. but like a lot of those big fights, like that stair fight sequence was all one. Yeah. And, and like Jackie like Chan back in the day, he would do a lot of oneers where <laughs> it is very clearly <laughs> him getting the crap kicked out of himself. Wow. Where in in the what we call gags, so a gag is like okay, if he kicks a ladder and it hits him in the face, and then more guys come this. Mm -hmm. You that means that he probably got he probably got hit in the face so many times before all the other cues. 
were perfect. Wow. So I, I have a massive respect for any mixed martial artist out there, but the oneers in particular are really impressive yeah. to me. That's awesome. For me, it's like going back to Busta Keaton. Yeah. Like, I mean, the original, like, you know, slapstick. Yeah. Because he, they were, they were inventing yeah. all that. Like, the old school yeah. cowboys that did the westerns and, um, and, and like Busta Keaton, they were, we, uh, these days, like, stunt people have progressed from being daredevils and, and, and complete risk takers. Is obviously, we still have a risk taking mentality, um, but it's, uh, there's an educated science behind it. We'll consult with, like, physicists and we'll consult with engineers. like this engineers and special effects artists mm -hmm. and everything like that when we're going to do a stunt these days and we obviously make it very safe like the stuff we did on Mad Max um Guy Norris was the stunt coordinator and and, super, and second yeah but he was Guy Norris was also the uh was one of the stunt guys from the second Mad Max mm. um he, he did all that so they but they were discovering everything yeah. they could do back then and he brought that, those guys brought that knowledge all those guys that limp and, and like are missing limbs and fingers mm -hmm. and toes and legs and things like that the walk around like limping because their hips are being smashed they're all the guys that allow us to be safer these days because they did it for real yeah. and they they worked out all the kinks and and then they allowed us to do it safer but also cgi i feel like has replaced a lot of the actual mm -hmm. things that people it's do made it safer, it's yeah. made it yeah. it's made it a lot safer yeah um <laughs> The, this gets asked to all of our guests. So someone, who is your favorite Batman? <laughs> Bat Dad. Bat Dad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. no one's ever answered that. Yes. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Stop! Get out of my room. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's that's a, no one's ever answered that. Before. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh my God. That's the awesome. politically correct one, right? Yeah, yeah, for real. You can't upset anyone with Bat Dad. He's amazing. That's incredible. <laughs> Um, what is your favorite costume or prop that you have ever used? Favorite costume or prop? Aside from the daggers. I mean, that was definitely my favorite. I have a tendency to uh, collect items from set. So do you have the daggers? <laughs> Forget to. I am not at liberty to divulge oh, that information. Right. She, there's no uh, evidence that she has those there's daggers. There's no evidence that I have any <laughs> daggers, swords, knives, or any paraphernalia from that, that show whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, yep. yeah. I get it. Mm -hmm. I got to play with, uh, so we did the previous for Aquaman uh, mm. at 87 when, uh, and, and Jason came in and he brought the, uh, the trident. So uh, Aquaman's trident. So I got to play around with that. And, and, so that and was, Wolverine's. Oh, the claws. Oh, I did, yeah. Claws. Oh, yeah. the claws. Yes, yeah. of course, yeah. That's I mean, that amazing. was really cool as well. Hey, remember those Wolverine yeah. claws you yeah. got yeah. to play with? Oh, my God. Well, the thing is, like, I, I got to, the, the funny, I, yeah, it's weird. Um, because I got to use those claws so much, I kind of, it became. Part of you? Well, not part, no. Not like <laughs> Hugh Jackman part of me. Just not out. like that. Um, I'm like, take these home. But, uh, <laughs> no, that was, uh, they just kind of became, because they were there all the time, yeah. it just became part of it, whereas, like, the trident I, I i got to play with like once or twice and mm. then i was then i was gone but uh, because on logan obviously and, oh, okay. and then i did um uh the second wolverine mm. that was kind of part of it yeah that's very Surreal. very very cool mm. so which job has been the most challenging and which the most rewarding marriage <laughs> oh my god i guess it's marriage. the answer to both questions right yeah. <laughs> Stop it. Anything that requires a lot of uh, physicalness to get into. So Spartacus was extremely challenging because the training, the gladiator boot camp uh, mm -hmm. that we mentioned, Into the Badlands was super difficult because we were, um, it was a post-apocalyptic world and uh, it was 110 degrees in New Orleans. No. And I'm wearing head-to-toe wool <gasps> riding boots. I had uh, uh, metal pieces attached to my, my my hair and my scalp, so that was super fun. You can mm. smell your scalp burning. Um, and it, oh, every yeah. like single one. white hair as well. And like, white yeah. hair, they made me, yeah. you're an albino character. And then even this, this film that um, I'm in pre-production for, I've never, I mean, I, I will be sparring with actual fighters. I will mm -hmm. actually have the cage on my face and get and feel You've had Josh like Barnett on here, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, oh yeah, yeah, Josh Barnett. I, I've, I've yeah. started training with Josh Barnett as well as the 8711 boys. Uh, I've been training with them for about uh, uh, two and a half years. They're the ones who did Deadpool, all the John Wicks, Atomic Blonde, mm -hmm. so many other things, <laughs> um, Matrix, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's just 
getting knocked out down and getting back up mm -hmm. it's every single job has its own challenges and in this one it's it's so it's so it's so exhausting but so rewarding but yes but so rewarding. <laughs> so rewarding very cool you my dear um i mean mad max was we were in namibia for i was there for eight months six day uh, weeks right six day weeks and we were doing like crazy Same. crazy hours we were yes. the first three or four days we were there they we were doing like french hours which is where you just work continuously and they bring lunch to you but yeah, when they you're bring on, lunch to you when you're on 120 vehicles that are constantly doing laps up and down mm -hmm. vehicles get forgotten and, and things like that so They're it was kind of three days yeah, yeah was that everyone's a little too fat um <laughs> we, yeah. <laughs> So, but uh, that was just, I mean, it was interesting because when we first got there, it, you, you think it's a desert and it's really warm. We were there in the middle of winter and um, deserts get cold, obviously. Mm -hmm. And people, we, we had no shirts on. Um, so it was, and then you get the wind chill from the vehicle. So it would get super cold. People were like hulled around yeah. the exhaust trying to get yeah. the, the warmth from the exhaust. I remember I was on the Giggle Horse, which was uh, the Amorton's vehicle. Mm. And we would have those twin engines. And occasionally when the wind blew right, you'd get the heat off the engines. And it was, that was, like, that <laughs> made you smile. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh. yeah. Yeah. And, and you just the, the conditions we were in. I had uh, contacts at the time and myself and another camera guy, we went, because uh, the dirt was building up under the contacts, I started losing my eyesight. Uh, I, I got infections in both eyes and I was getting yeah, uh, ulcers really scary. And, and started losing the eyesight. So I couldn't wear, um, contacts there and had to work, have these special drops in and oh my gosh yeah. so yeah challenging yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah like yeah. i started to go blind <laughs> yeah fellow castmates uh, of mine have, have broken their ribs broken their eye sockets been knocked unconscious blood infections I was covered in scars just like all kinds of wow yeah, yeah all kinds of stuff there's always risks yeah there's always risks yeah. so what's next if you guys can talk about it what are you working on at the moment uh, there, there are several things that I'm so excited. I just can't. I, uh, I, so we'll I have to have you back yet. after. But uh, one thing I can say is I uh, recently have collaborated with uh, Reginald Hudlin, who is the the uh, graphic novelist uh, of Black Panther. Um, so he's actually collaborating with us on a on a project that I I wrote and I'm producing. That's fantastic! Yeah, Congrats! So, uh, that's and, really and cool. Stephen's also a producer on it as well, so that's something mm -hmm. that's that's uh, super exciting. And then I have a um, a big studio action film that I'm leaving for very shortly. Yeah. <laughs> very <laughs> shortly. That is uh, going to involve some really cool bionic parts. Um, and then this uh, mixed martial arts uh, film is a collaboration. With some some people mm -hmm. that you guys would definitely recognize. Yeah, so that's it's, amazing. It's very exciting. Yay. Yes. Yay. How about you, my dear? He, he, um, I think I think I think really I can say. I mean, like, well, I I mean, I can say because like it's all stunts. So like, like uh, what we got John Wick three coming mm -hmm. up. Um, that's coming out. I worked on that, and then uh, last year did uh, worked on Hobbs and Shore as well. Oh, very which cool. Which is coming out, and um, that was another fun stunt. I was like riding around in a Black Hawk. For a lot of it, uh, that that some of that footage is online, so yeah. I, I guess I can really say that. Cool. And then, um, really cool. so, yeah, The Rock again. Well, then, uh, and then uh, yeah, and, DJ, and Jungle Cruise. Oh, and Jungle Cruise. And Jungle Cruise. So I worked oh, on Jungle Cruise exciting. as well. So that's that's coming up as well. There are all, all films to look out for in the next. Well, year there, or so. there's another one too that you just you just you finished. Just can't say. That they would knock you upside the head mm -hmm. if you forgot to mention that one. It's it's a it's a biggie. We'll talk about it. Nails. <laughs> hmm? Oh her, yeah. Her her action figure. Oh okay. Is yeah. In this, this oh, there went just uh, just they just wrapped on Birds of Prey, which I worked on as well. So. Which is the. Yeah. Hmm. The movie about. Well, it's it's Harley Quinn, Huntress, yeah. and. Yeah. I don't oh, know. Harley Quinn. You guys yeah. heard of mm -hmm. heard of her? Huntress. Yeah. Not yeah. At all my favorite <laughs> yeah. character in the DC universe. Exactly. Very exactly. Cool. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. So that's gonna be a fun film as well. Don't you hate it when you forget to mention things like the Harley Quinn movie? Like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, but, I mean, with a resume like what you guys have put together, like, how can, you know, it's stuff like, well, so, so proud of him. Yeah, it's okay. Like you said earlier, it's easier to say the things he hasn't done yeah, than it's, the things it's a little he bit easier. But that's, like, I mean, it's kind of, I mean, I, I, it's going to sound weird or anything, but, like, you come to work and you get to play with all of these, and, like, I'm sure half the audience out there would give, a lot to be able to come to in here and play with. Like, honestly, um, kind of doing stunts, you, I don't know what I'm working on half the time and you rock up and you're like, oh, hey, I'm working with you. Or like you're standing <laughs> in, in you're standing in front of 
like Batman or yeah. like or you know Harley Quinn, Harley Quinn or something <laughs> yeah, like that. That's, right? Yeah, that's kind of Tuesday. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Well, thank you both so much for joining us. Of this course, has been an amazing you. time. Oh my gosh. And then you're going to have to come back when you're allowed to talk about all the yeah, things that we've been to that today. And of course, our audience really wants you to play She-Ra. So whenever yes. you make that happen. Yes, I said that action figure. Yeah, yeah. We're going to make that happen and then she'll play She-Ra yeah. for us in a fan film or yeah. at least. Anyway. Yeah.